Ah! Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I didn't see you guys there. How's it going, Roughnecks? Just, uh, playing with my fist weapons a little bit. So, uh, today, I guess we're gonna be talking about fist weapons and, uh, everything that goes with them. So, take a second to subscribe, like the video, and let's get started. Okay, guys, when it comes to fist weapons, there are four kinds, but one of them doesn't really count as a weapon. You've got your bare knuckles, just punch stuff. You've got your fist, your knuckle wraps. You've got your iron knuckles, and you've got your steel knuckles. All right, when looking at these weapons, they all can use the same mods. So let's modify it and see what those are. So you have the... These five right here, you can use. But, unless you have an empty slot and you don't have any other mods, you're not going to put them on. And the only reason why you put them on is because every mod, watch, increases damage. So, take it off. Um, so this one is a wood splitter mod. I'm not going to go over what these do. Iron breaker mod, bunker buster mod... Gravedigger mod and the Temper Blade mod. You don't want any of those unless you have open slots. So I'm just going to drop those out of my inventory and get them out of the way. We also have the Weighted Head mod, the Serrated Blade mod, the Diamond Blade Tip mod, Structural Brace mod, Rad Remover mod, Blessed Metal mod, Ergonomic Grip mod, Fortifying Grip mod, and the Hunter mod. Okay, in situations... These three go together. You can't have them at the same time. You can't have a grip. More than one grip. Uh, well, I think you can have the structural brace grip and... But you can't have these two grips together. So you got to choose one. I choose the ergonomic grip. I choose the weighted head. Um, I choose the, the diamond tip mod. And I choose the rad remover. Somebody told me that the Blessed Metal mod is not in the actual game. It's only in the creative menu. I have not looked into that further. If you're not able to get it in the game... I've never found it in the game. If you're not able to get it in the game, you'd go with the Rad Remover mod. Because when you run into Rads, you want to be able to stop them from healing. Or if you want to fight animals, you put the Hunter mod on. Um, I choose the Diamond t Tip Blade mod because it degrades 40% slower rather than the structural brace which does 25 percent so it makes it so that your weapon degrades a lot slower weighted head knocks them down you you want that you need to knock these guys down as part of the overall uh fist weapons build it's very important to have that so this is like your main uh mod you want this weighted head mod is like the first thing you want uh for a mod and then the ergonomic grip which which decreases melee stamina use uh, by 10%. You definitely want that. So anyway, that is the mods. So let's move on from that and go on to the books. So in your inventory, if you click on your skills tab and you click on this perk books, you can see the list of books that you have read. And right here is bar brawling. That's the main book that you want. Right here, uh, Learn from the Irish legend, Lucky Bastard himself, and never get bested in the good old-fashioned barroom brawl. Reading the books will unlock permanent per perks. Read all the volumes in the series to receive a special collector's perk. The special collector's perk for reading all seven is the seventh curse. Every seventh attack you do with a fist weapon gives you 300% extra damage. Incredible. So anyway, let's read down these. We're going to look at... These are like a summary. So we're going to look at the ones that are in our inventory because it's a little bit more, tells you a little bit more. So, volume one gives you 10% more damage. Done. Number two uh, allows you to do sprinting attacks, have a higher chance of knocking down your opponent, which is awesome because one of the other books increases your damage when they're on the ground. So, the more you can get them on the ground, the more damage you're going to do. Not to mention they can't attack you when they're, when they're on the ground. So, Bob Rowling 3 
Gain 5% damage with each kill up to 15, and then after 10 seconds without killing anything, it degrades one level. So you kill one, you get five, you kill two, you get 10, you kill three, you get 15, but then you don't kill anything for 10 seconds, you go back down to 10, and so on and so forth until it's gone. Okay, then you got level four, which do 20% extra damage to knock down and stun opponents. That's the book I'm talking about. So with the weighted mod, with the sprinting power attack, with um, some other perks, which are your skills, which we'll go through later, you get them down on the ground and you do 20% extra damage. That's amazing. So let's move on to adrenaline healing. Adrenaline healing, when in combat, health recovers one hit point with every punch. This one I, I think is might be bugged a little bit. And I say that because... I've had it perk, and I've had it not work. I've had it work, and I've had it not work. But at any rate, let's move on. It will not work on health that is not there. So that, that black gap, you have to use your bandages in order to clear the black gap and raise your max hit points in order for it to work. It will not push you past that point. Okay, so let's move on. Bar Brawl Volume 6, Rage Mode. After getting hit by brawling attacks are 20% faster and increase movement speed by 10%. That's awesome. So if you get hit, then you just get pissed off and you just start throwing punches like Rocky Balboa up in their face, which is awesome. Bar Brawl in Volume 7, boozed up, drinking beer no longer blurs your vision, and your buzz lasts twice as long. Now, we're going to go over beer in a minute, but beer is incredible. It increases your brawling damage by 300% by drinking it, and this makes it twice as long and it doesn't blur your vision. That's amazing. Now let's talk about two other books I found that could possibly help your melee build, uh, especially with fist fighting, which is the hit and run. Use this dirty trick to, in desperate situations, power attacks to the legs, slow enemies. So if you need to get away, you can punch them in the legs with a power attack. Uh, volume four, power attacks increase the chance of knocking down your opponent. Huge because of the 20% increase from this other book that you got right here. So that is amazing. You want that. All right. Let's move on to our skills. The skills are under the agility. Whoa. No, they're not. Hold on. Where are we? Fortitude section. All right. So with fortitude, if you just do regular fortitude, each thing gives you more chance to dismember with fists and fist weapons. So you want to build in your fortitude. You also have the brawler, which uh, the first level, um, it allows you to craft fist weapons. It also allows you to do 10% more damage with piss. With fists. Piss. What? At any rate... 10% more damage with fists. And then punches the head, negate the infection ability. That's huge. You don't want them to bite you. Um, and then you keep moving down, and uh, power attacks to the head have a 20% chance to knock them down, which, of course, has the 20% chance, 20% uh, more damage. So you want to knock them down. You want to just, like, boom, knock them down. You know what I mean? Just, like, roughnecks like that, knock them down. All right. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Knock them down. All right. So then when you get to the end, yeah, your your fists are now mixed martial artist and registered lethal weapon. Deal 50% more damage and have a higher chance of exploding heads. Exploding heads are one of the funnest things about Seven Days to Die. You pop. Spreading tomato juice all over the wall, which is awesome. Anyway, let's move on. This pain tolerance is another huge one. You like to think you're tough because you don't have a glass jaw anymore. Reduce hit point loss by 5% and 20% less chance to get stunned. And this gets higher and higher. You want this. Look at that. Um, look at that. Reduce hit point loss by 20% and have an 80% less chance to get stunned by the end. Reduce hit point loss by 25% and have no chance to get stunned. That is huge in a fist build. We also have healing factor. Healing factor is probably one that you might toss a point in just so that you're getting hit points back over time, which is something I tend to do in a 
<clears throat> something I tend to do in a playthrough. Um, and then there's, you know, and then it reduces it, of course. And it also makes critical injuries uh, come back faster. So that's really good. That's really good to have um, as well. So healing factor, pain tolerance, uh, the brawler, and of course fortitude itself are great skills to be had. So let's go back to our inventory and talk about drinks and food. Okay, so if we're talking about beer again, it's got the stamina regen of 40%. Brawling damage of 300, stun resist, and the duration, which if you read the book, it doubles the duration. So that's a minute and a half you are just a animal punching people in the mouth hole. You know what I mean? They start to utter some noise, and you fill it with your fist, making them shut their mouth. Which is amazing, especially when it comes to zombies. So, make sure to get some of that. Now, I grabbed... This, Grandpa's Moonshine, just in case you didn't have beer, which gives you melee damage of 400, stun resist, health, damage mitigation, stamina regen, so it's got a whole list of stuff. Now, I don't know if the game counts melee as fist damage. It should. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, I mean, they call this brawling damage, and they call this melee damage, so I don't know if it's different or not. But anyway, it still would be great from the stun resist, the health, the damage mitigation... And the stamina regen all will assist you in this. So let's go down to the coffee and blackstrap coffee, which just have stamina regen. That's the only reason why I grabbed these two. And uh, I would drink those if I did not have these. Just so that I could keep on throwing punches and just like, just do the combos. You know what I mean? Boom, 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 Okay, anyway. Then we got spaghetti. Spaghetti gives you max stamina bonus of 40, which is the highest. Of course, a lot of foods give you stamina bonuses, but this one's the highest. So that's why I only grab that one. You're going to want to eat food. Get that stamina bonus. That way you can just keep on keeping on, Roughnecks. Keep on keeping on. All right. Now, as far as uh, drugs and candy, we got the Fort Bites, which give you the damage mitigation, which means you can just get, get beat and keep on going. Um... You got the Skull Crushers, which gives you plus 50% melee damage. Which, again, if melee damage doesn't count as fists because brawling damage or whatever, it's lost in there somewhere. I don't know. At any rate, it possibly could help you. And then we've got the Vitamins, which are disease resist 100%. Which is amazing in the beginning because, you know, if you get bit up close... You're gonna, you're gonna hurt, Roughnecks. It's gonna hurt. So, at any rate, that is what I've got for you with the melee weapons. Uh, when it comes to fist weapons and a fist build. That being said, I think we're gonna be trying a fist playthrough here. Probably very shortly. We're gonna do a fist only playthrough and see what we can do, Roughnecks. So... Check out that Discord. We have a free server to the public for subscribers to the channel and members of the Discord. Information is on the Discord. Come on over, join up. Also, we have Patreon. and pa The patrons help support the channel. I appreciate every single one of them. Thank you so much. And if I don't see you in the comments below, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.